right? So we can start off with the S tier. The S tier, I place uh, G2. So the main concern, I think all of the good things uh, can be easily talked about when it comes to G2, but the main concern is how is Yai going to adapt to jungling against opposition that is Bo, Malrang, and Elioia? This is not the same level of competition that he's played against. Yaik has had a lot of success playing uh, together with Aika. And his transition into the LEC as a prospect, there couldn't have been a better scenario for a player like Yaik. He's moving into a team with players like Caps, Miki, Hans Sama, and a coaching staff that has a very good track record. Jungling in scrims is very different from jungling on stage. You need to be very, very precise. And a lot of the moments... So basically, not less things tend to happen, but your mistakes are heavily punished and not taking opportunities is a form of mistakes, right? And that shock of that cold water of, of playing on stage is something that I am always curious about because jungle is a role that is very influenced by, uh, of course, experience. So we've had a situation like that in the past where a jungle comes into the league and busts, you know, huge... I'm not going, I'm not going to continue with my metaphor. Uh, Elioia was fantastic. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Elioia was fantastic. But that is not the norm. That is rather, you know... Uh, a player that is very unique in itself. But I think Yike has a team surrounding him that can definitely set him up for success. And I think uh, G2 as a team has a history of using their offseason in a very good manner. I think this is something that was shown in last year too, in terms of their preparation. I, I know that LFL uh, occasionally has stage games, but it's not quite the same as, as the LEC stage. The pressure and the stakes are higher. And um, that is important to, to relate to. But I'll be very, very impressed by Ike if he hits the ground running and is playing like a true LEC elite from the get-go. And I think if it happens, it should be celebrated. All right? But I think the surrounding pieces, I think uh, Broken Blade, I think he's, he's decent enough. I think he can uh, be... Uh, a, a decent player on this roster. I think in terms of top laners, I think the main question is, is like how good is Photon going to be? Uh, like that's the main question mark. Is Photon going to be that good that he forces uh, a way of playing out of the other players? Or or is it just going to be the same old, same old top lane uh, in Europe, right? I think Broken Blade is very serviceable. I think Caps and of course... Hansama, Miki X, maybe you're not personally hype, hyped on them based off of their um, previous year, but on my end, I think these two players are really, really good. I think personality-wise, from from in terms in terms of the joy and the love for the game, I think that Caps, Miki, Hansama, they seem to be in the the same kind of uh, sphere of thought, and I think that this environment will be a, a really strong one, and I think that G two. Uh, has really, really high ceiling with the players. So they are an S tier. And the next one for me is Koi. I put them also in S tier. I think, uh, similar reasoning to, to the previous one, I think that Koi, uh, if, if you look at what, where the meta is right now, right? Uh, they did very well last year. They, they have a lot of depth in their mid lane. You know, a, a very important piece uh, about being very high up on this list Having an, a mid laner that is elite in the context of Europe is super, super important. Who are those mid laners? Okay. Who are those mid laners? You have to think Larsen, Caps, Humanoid. Those are the three that are considered the elite three right now. Perks, of course, is in that conversation, naturally, right? But he needs to show us a little bit more for us to be super, super confident. In, in that point. Someone has, someone in the chat says Vitio a bit, no? But Vitio, something that is unique about Vitio, even though he has had regular split games, that definitely puts him on the map and puts him in that conversation. Very strong laner, very strong mechanical player, very good team fighter. Vitio hasn't won a single best of five yet. 
And winning best of fives requires a very specific character. Vettel is definitely the type of player that has the potential. He has the potential to do something like that. But he needs to go over that hurdle, right? Because go, losing right before that hurdle, that's something that I've seen in the past with the elite tier mid laners, with, with the people that have that elite tier mid laner potential. Vettel, I have memories. We played against Misfits in a best of five series. In game five, Vettel was solo killed by a twisted fate as a Leblanc, right? The pressure rose, right? And that's completely fine, right? Vettel is a very young player. He has a lot of potential and he has a lot of room to grow. And this could be the year he has his breakout year on this Excel roster. But before I see it, I am going to withhold my reservations. But he definitely has the potential. And potential is such a memed word, but Vettel definitely, definitely, you know, <laughs> the correct definition of potential has it. He has shown really, really high level games. And that is my definition of, of potential, you know, the glimpses of, of, of brilliance. And in the regular season, Vettel is an absolute, absolute machine. We continue, right? In regards to Koi, I think that Larson can adapt, adjust to matters, very good on the majors, you know, uh, we've seen him play uh, the Rises and the Twisted Fates too. I think Larson, uh, in, in my eyes, preparing against him, I think in the last year he grew a lot as a player. I think he grew a lot as a player and he became a lot less one-dimensional. He's had a lot of series that I think he was a standout player. I still would rate Larson below Humanoid and Caps, but I think Larson is definitely at the level where he can uh, compete and will never be a liability, right? And sometimes even go so far to carry games against the best of the best. Malrang, I think he speaks for himself. I think Malrang is up there together with Bo and Elioya in terms of how excited I am for junglers coming into this next split. And then I think with Upset and Healy no longer playing together, I think Comp and Trimby go into this season as the strongest bot lane on paper. I think Hansam and Mickey can definitely build up that synergy and compete with them. And I think Hansam and Mickey are, you know, the, the Hansam and Mickey, Trimby Comp, those are the two bot lanes that I will look out for the most. And I think the, the recipe for winning the LEC is often having a super, super strong bot lane with a lot of depth having an elite TM mid laner and a jungler to support it, and then a top laner that is sane. <laughs> having a top lane that is sane. And I say that sometimes you have those top laners, they are insisting on picking Camille in a very important game, and then they die in a 1v1. <laughs> sane top laners, the ones that uh, can adjust to the game state, and you can also put yourself in that position where regardless of what's going on with you, you kind of, you are tied into the game and you'll find your ways to be useful, you know? Wunder is a player that is a master of that, right? 